Hey folks, Todd Coburn here with your Aerospace Structure Series. This video is the third part of Lecture 9 focused on how to calculate margins of safety when you have threaded fasteners. Let's take a look at how it works. So when we have a threaded fastener, now, <clears throat> if you have a threaded fastener and it is loaded in tension, then actually it will be, have the critical margin of safety will cap it in the threads. So we will take the tension stress, calculate on that tension area based on the table of properties that we saw in part A of the lecture. And then we can just write a margin of safety directly, the FTU, divided by that stress based on that tension area, minus 1. Or if we have only shear acting on the fastener. Now normally, uh, we have a, uh, if a joint is properly designed, then that means your fastener here is going to be have a shank, it's going to have some threads, and the plates that you are going to be fastening together will occur the interface between those plates will occur in the shank area. So normally that's just going to be whatever the shear force is, whatever the shear allowable is, and uh, that is your uh, margin of safety minus one. Or if you wrote the stress, the shear stress will be just P over A, where A is the shank area, okay? And then you could write your margin of safety F S U over Fs minus 1. So if you have tension alone, it's just P allowable over P minus 1. If you have shear alone, then it's going to be S allowable over S minus 1. But if you have both together, if this bolt is in tension and shear, then you need to write the interaction equation. Because actually, when you have shear and tension, the bolt responds based on this interaction equation. So what we, and we can actually say, well, if we have only tension, then this is zero. If we have tension and bending, then we get a term for both of these. So let's say we have a bolt that has tension, bending, and shear. If that's the case, we will first calculate what is our shear stress ratio. Now the shear stress ratio, if you actually calculate stresses, it would be the shear stress divided by the FSU of the bolt, right? Or commonly, we will just take what's the shear force divided by the shear allowable of the bolt. That's the stress ratio for shear. The stress ratio for tension is can be written as just the force, the force on the bolt divided by the force allowable on the bolt. Or if you want to use stresses, that means it would be F tension divided by FTU is our uh, stress ratio for tension. Your bending allowable similarly can be either, your bending stress ratio could be written as a function of the moment versus the moment allowable, or the bending stress divided by the bending allowable. Now often we'll just throw in FTU into this, but except that some bolts that we're gonna encounter will already have a bending stress that's a lot larger than our FTU, and basically what that is doing is accounting for the extra, kind of like plastic bending, the extra capability of the bolt beyond its linear capability, okay? All right, so basically if we only have a single load, we can just write our margin of safety in the normal way. If we have multiple loads, we're going to use this interaction curve. The way this works is now the focus on this, this is the zero margin of safety line. This is the curve. This is the plot of this interaction curve. And what we're going to do is calculate our margin of safety in the normal way. If you forget how to calculate the margin of safety for interaction curves, go back to your 3261 handbook, section 12.6, and that defines it. But basically what we're going to do, we're going to take our, let's say we have RS and we have a RT plus RB. So we come up here with RS. Let's say it's right here. Let's say our RS is 0.7. So we're going to plot that here. Let's say our RT plus RB is 0.4. Now, the way to write your margin of safety, as we saw in chapter 12.6 of the first volume, 
we draw a line through here, and then we take this length divided by this length minus 1. Okay? That's one way to calculate the margin of safety. You'll notice, though, that this table that I developed for this plot, I developed it uh, better than that for you guys. So actually taking this 0.7 and this 0.4, this same point, you'll notice I have placed all these intermediate lines, and these are the margins of safety at different places. So you'll say, okay, this one is the margin of safety equals zero line, excuse me, right here, and this is 0.1, this is the 0.2 line, this is the 0.3 line, this is the 0.5 line. That means our point is almost right on 0.3, which means it's like our margin of safety should be about 0.295 or something like that. You can actually read, you'll notice these, this space isn't linear, so you got to be a little careful, but you can kind of read the plot and get a pretty accurate value. If we have a value out here, we know it's negative margin of safety. And if it falls right on that line, you can see that it's a negative 0.1 margin of safety. You see how that works? So you should be able to read these. That's how we will write margins of safety when we have combined loads on bolts. Got it? So you have three videos for threaded fasteners, standard fasteners, what I call non-aerospace fasteners. You have a video talking about how to understand the callouts for United National Bolts, where to get the tension areas, and all the other uh, data according to the geometry of the way that bolt is with a nominal diameter, whether it's coarse or fine, how many threads per inch. We can calculate the lead from that, and then also how to get the allowable stresses for that and then we saw how to do that for metric bolts and now we see how to put together margins of safety when we have more than one load on the bolt shear or tension could be handled alone like normal if they are both acting at the same time you would combine them one other comment is in order a lot of times when we use that interaction curve we will combine we will calculate our tension stress based on the tension area, right? That's what we said. That's what's critical, because if we look at that bolt, that's where that thing will fail. But if the plates that are being attached together interface on the, uh, and then we take the, the stress ratio based on shear as well. But you'll notice if you calculate the tension stress for down here and the shear stress for up here, then actually combining them like that is a little conservative. When you're out there in industry, you actually could do that interaction by calculating the tension stress on the shank diameter. If it's if the shear plane is on the shank, you could actually calculate your RT for the shank, your RS in the normal fashion, combine those, and this applies to bending as well, and check your interaction curve. Then you can go and check down here just for the tension. There should be no shear down here at the threads, and you can check that with just a margin of safety against this net tension stress here. That actually will be a little more accurate. For our purposes in arrow 3271, we will just conservatively calculate our tension stresses based on A sub T and combine them in that conservative way. But you folks out there in industry can actually get it a little closer to the right on, a little less conservatism that's more accurate. Make sense? If you missed any part of this video, go back and re-watch. Make sure you understand this once we get to our next video on rivets and some other things. It'll, uh, we're going to be adding to this, so you need to be ready. Enjoy.